on the regular city commission meeting in order to please rise for the invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have here this evening. Lord, we ask you to bless this city commission and give them the knowledge and wisdom we want to trust and have to make the decisions that are in the best interest of this community. Lord, we ask a special blessing on all of our response, first responders, Lord, that you look after them, take care of them, and keep them safe. For all these things we ask in your precious heavenly name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening is the free board minutes from August the 24th meeting. They have been distributed. Are there any additions, solutions, or corrections? Hearing none, we need a motion. So moved. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. Motion is second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Yeah, it's First reading public hearing proposed ordinances. Ordinance 23 18. Oh, sir, do you want to do the What did I miss? Oh, I jumped right past the door. <laughs> Let's go back to the goodness. I'm moving right along, bro. I'm sorry. So let's go back to the Let's be the first thing that the Let's go back to the budget hearing. <laughs> I kept First reading here, public hearing. I jumped right past that. Excuse me. Ordinance 23-22. Yes, sir. Ordinance 23-22, an ordinance levying tax upon all taxable property within the city of Butcher Garden, Florida, for the tax year beginning on October 1, 2023, and ending on September 30, 2024. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. This ordinance sets a rate for next fiscal year. Staff is recommending that we keep it flat at 4.5, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, ma'am. Questions from Commission? Good job on the presentation, Larry. Thank you. This is a public hearing, so we will open the public hearing if anyone wishes to speak. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. We need a motion. Motion to approve ordinance 2322 with a second reading of public hearing on 282023. Okay, we have a second. second. We have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carried unanimously. Ordinance 23-23. Yes, sir. Ordinance, ordinance 23-23, an ordinance appropriating and allocating all revenue and funds of the city of Winter Garden, Florida, for the tax year beginning on October 1, 2023, and ending on September 30, 2024. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. This ordinance allocates the anticipated general fund revenues for this year 2024. This does tie to the proposed budget that we went over and uh, discussed and presented at the budget workshop on August 24th, and staff recommends approval. Questions from the commission? I would like to take a moment and thank Ms. Laura and John uh, for spending uh, a lot longer than I thought we were gonna spend going through uh, the budget, but uh, they have done an excellent job. Uh, she had all the answers to everything. <laughs> so did John, and uh, it, it, it was uh, very enlightening. And I uh, do appreciate all the hard work and everything you do on that. It's uh, just a, a very good job. Thank you very much. Any other questions? This is a public hearing. We will open a public hearing if anyone wishes to speak. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and we need a motion. Move to approve ordinance 23-23 with second reading and public hearing for September 28, 2023. We have a second? Second. We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Ordinance 23-24. Yes, Ordinance 23-24, an ordinance appropriating and allocating all revenue and funds of the Community Redevelopment <coughs> Agency, CRA, at the City of Winter Garden, Florida, for the tax year beginning on October 1, 2023, and ending on September 30, 2024. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. This ordinance allocates to anticipate CRA revenues. We have presented it to the CRA Advisory Board on August 8th. They did approve it unanimously, and staff recommends approval. Questions from the commission? Once again, this is a public hearing. We will open a public hearing if anyone wishes to comment. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. We need a motion. Make a motion to approve of ordinance 23 24, the second reading of public hearing on September 28, 2023. We have a second. A second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 
Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Ordinance 23-25. Yes, Ordinance 23-25, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Winter Garden authorizing the appropriations of city funds for fiscal year 2023 through 2024 in accordance with Article 3, Section 30, Subsection 5 of the City Charter of the City of Winter Garden, Florida, and Florida Statutes 166.241 for the purpose of fulfilling the financial obligations of the city. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And this ordinance authorizes the appropriations of all the city funds and proposed this year 2024 budget. And we'd be happy to answer any questions we have. Once again, any questions from the commission? This is a public hearing. We will open the public hearing. Are there any comments? Saying none, we'll close the public hearing. We need a motion. Move to approve ordinance 23 25, the second reading public hearing scheduled for September 28, 2023. Okay, we have a second. Stop it. Motion is second. All in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now we're good to where I started that. First, reading public hearing proposed ordinances under regular meeting. Ordinance 23 18. Yes, sir. Ordinance 23 18, an ordinance of the City of Fulton Garden, Florida, rezoning approximately, approximately 11.34 plus minus acres. Located at Stony Brook West Parkway, parcel ID 3622-27000-0085, generally located south of State Road 429, west of Whitney Road, east of Scarlet Sage Court, and north of Stony Brook West Parkway from C-2 Arterial Commercial District to PCD Plant Commercial Development, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, this is a request for PCD rezoning of a property located on the northwest side of Stony Brook West Parkway and Windermere Road. This property is 11.34 acres in size and is currently zoned C2, Arterial Commercial District, and has a commercial future land use designation. The applicant is proposing to rezone the property to plan commercial development in order to permit the development of 13 new commercial buildings with a combined total square footage of 89,880 per feet that will house medical office, office, and retail uses. All of the buildings will be oriented towards the adjacent roads with a parking and stormwater pond located on the north side behind the buildings. They will all be one story tall except for the building at the corner of Stonebrook and Windermere, which will be two stories. This project was designed in close coordination with community members uh, and neighbor neighborhood groups who desired an attractive neighborhood scale commercial development that emphasized pedestrian comfort and safety. Staff has reviewed the application and recommends approval of Ordinance 23-18. Answer questions. Questions from the Commission. So, Kelly, back to the eight items. <laughs> the famous <laughs> eight items. Um, I know you worked very closely with Kelly Moffrey and the group from yes. Winnipeg Crossing and all that, and I really appreciate that. They were very happy there. I don't know if anybody's here in support of the project. <laughs> Oh, thank you folks for showing up. I appreciate it. But uh, that was my whole thing. It's whatever the community wanted um, is what you know we would support. And they seem to support the project. But there were those eight items. And I, if you could just clarify, I know there was some of them that we weren't able to get in the PD, but we're going to continue to work on them. Yeah, a lot of the items that were, were brought up in, in Kelly's eight additional items, we've been working with Tool Design Group on, on addressing a lot of the pedestrian safety concerns that the neighbors had. Um, those eight additional items kind of came a little late in the game, um, but actually the majority of what they're asking for is not within the, the project site. It kind of falls outside of the site and the roadway. Things like, you know, extending a pork chop, um, uh, extending some, some dash lines to indicate, you know, the, the turn lanes, uh, reorienting a sidewalk approach. I mean, a lot of these things were either very detailed items that could be addressed during site plan review or things that fall uh, solely within the right of way, which would be under the city's purview to, to accomplish. Okay. So we will definitely be looking at each one of those eight items during the, <coughs> the site plan review. Fair enough, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? This is a public hearing, so we'll open the public hearing for your questions. Come up and give me an address, please. Hello, uh, my name is Pam Muller. I uh, live at 1108 Shadow Moss Drive, Winter Garden, Florida. I'm here uh, in two capacities, uh, not only as a homeowner in Winter Garden, uh, I am the HOA president of Westfield Lakes, which if you're not familiar with where it's located, it's in Warrior Road and Windermere Road. 
we run up a block away from the intersection of Windermere Road and Tommen Road, or I should say Warrior and Tommen. Um, it wasn't discussed here this evening, but that project will increase traffic along that section of Windermere Road going toward Tommen Road into Ocoee. Uh, and that intersection is already very problematic. Um, I understand it falls under Ocoee, the city of Ocoee, but we would really, uh, in addition to the eight items that you all, that Mark spoke about, um, it's also, uh, we would appreciate the city's support in getting some traction with the city of Ocoee to address that intersection, um, because it's already very difficult to turn left out of there. You have our whole community, so that's 320 homes with obviously multiple drivers. So you're talking easily 600, 700, 800 drivers. Um, you have Southwest Aquatics on the corner, you have the Roper YMCA, and you have West Orange High School. So at certain times of the day, that intersection is, is very busy. And I don't remember the number from the traffic study they did, but the majority of increased traffic will actually be along that section of the road, not on Stony Brook West. So uh, I just wanted to make the commissioners all aware of that, and if there's any way that you can support us in trying to get a COE to start making improvements to that intersection, it would be very much appreciated. Um, my second uh, role, if you will, is just to step forward for Safe Streets West Orange, which um, already was mentioned, the eight points, um, and I already hear that they're gonna continue to work with them. So. I don't need to go into detail about those, but I just wanted to make sure that they were, you know, everybody was aware that there are some items that that group and the community feel are very important in keeping the safety of um, the community, residents, walkers, bikers, you know, at the forefront in the development of that corner. Thank you. Hold on a second. Then. So, uh, we're, and I'm sorry, I was reading you said we're talking about the intersection, the Coe intersection at Tom and, and, and Windermere, right? Right. right. Yeah, we right. have spoken to a Coe about yeah. that yeah. Yeah. as well. So, I know they're working on some things. We'll stay on, I know, we'll yeah. stay on top of it. Very silent on their Yeah, it's kind of out of sight out of mind. Happenings. Right. And by the way, Pam is a fantastic HA. Everybody should be so lucky to have Pam as an HOA <laughs> manager. Right. The city has worked with her quite a bit. She's a fantastic, and she handles everything with grace and, and uh, professionalism. We appreciate it. Thank you, Pam. To, and to that point, we're working with the COA. I've contacted uh, them twice on this uh, matter and offered some short term solutions that we would take as a city to try to address some of the safety concerns. And then uh, he would talk about a longer term solution, such as the roundabout, but I will make a third one with them if I can. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Some of you may remember me. I was on the PNC board a few years ago. Uh, I was pretty active in the Android does on the police and fire and pension board as well. Um, <clears throat> just to reiterate, our, that intersection where the roundabout currently is, uh, we worked very hard to get that roundabout put there. Originally, Orange County was in a wide and flat intersection. We fought them for a long time and with the help of Windermere Orange, of course, and the city commissioners, which we appreciate. The point of the exercise here, we know it's going to be something developed on the corner. We've looked at several different options over the years, and the one that's presented most recently we're most in favor of, providing we meet those eight points that Kelly laid out. We don't want that to get lost in the sauce during this process, and actually the traffic uh, uh, engineer who worked with the developer agreed to those eight points. So we really want to make sure and reinforce the fact that the city follows up on this and holds their feet to the fire. That being said, Pam uh, brought the Tolman Road, Warrior, that's a mess, needs to be addressed, and you guys have been working on it, it's a slow process. We also would like to see a roundabout there as well. Third item, the park that's located adjacent to the 429 that the City of Wayward purchased with my co-author, City Commissioner. They are building or widening the 429 as you're all aware. I have some concerns, and I'll send pictures to Mark Nation. Um, we are experiencing flooding in that park, bad flooding. Now I'm willing to wait until construction's over, but I made some observations which disturb me. It looks like the rainwater that's gonna come off that road is directly going to spill into that park, which is unacceptable. It's gonna be close to flooding. It's already flooded now because of construction, lack of proper sweat management on that site. 
Um, the contractor is not named. You're on a different piece of property now, aren't you? Yes, the, the park on uh, so this, Windermere Road. So this, we're just talking about this right now, so can we get to that? Oh, sure. Yes. I'm sorry, I just figured I'd lay it out quick. <laughs> you know, I don't blame you. <laughs> say that you're I don't get, a, I don't get a, a forum like this often. So I I but we need to probably stick to this piece of property on this. Of course, Mr. Mayor, I will, I will, I will, I will take a lot of follow up. I'll talk to more information. I'll send some pictures. But we will take I know we have contacts at the Expressway Authority, and I can assure you that I'm sure, I rest assured you guys will follow up. Okay. okay. All right. Appreciate we it. will Thank certainly you. do that, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, with that, we will close the public hearing. We need a motion. Make a motion we approve ordinance 23-18 or a second reading public hearing September 28th, 2023. Yeah, we have a second. We have a motion to have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? This motion carried unanimously. Next, we have ordinance 23-19, 23-20, 23-21. 23-19, an ordinance of the City of Winter Garden, Florida, providing for the annexation of certain additional lands, generally described as approximately 8.72 plus minus acres, located at 1265 and 1271 Avalon Road on the northeast corner of Avalon Road and Rolling Rock Way into the City of Winter Garden, Florida, redefining the city boundaries to give the city jurisdiction over said property, providing for severability, providing for effective date. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So we're only considering the annexation right now. But, but just to be yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, this is a request for annexation for an 8.72 acre property located at 1265 and 1271 Avalon Road. Staff has reviewed the application and recommends approval of the annexation. Okay. Questions from the commission? No, but I, I certainly support the annexation of that property. It's something we've been after long at Avalon Street for quite a while, so it's, it's part of our larger plan. So good job. Thank you. I'm not sure that the uh, annexation portion affects us as much as the other two, but um, I think probably the first time I've ever abstained from a vote on the city commission, but I think I'd abstain from this. Uh, right across the street from uh, this property is my in-laws property, it's my wife's now, and whatever happens on this side, I think is going to affect the monetary value of the other side of the uh, of the other side of the road. So just so that there is no perception or confusion or anything else, I think it's just best that uh, I abstain from voting on this. That's, that's fine. You have the right to discuss it, um, but you know, from the vote, you should then abstain and then file your uh, document with the city clerk within 15 days. <laughs> 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 No, I got to answer. She'll, uh, <laughs> she'll go, hey, where is it? Okay. All right. Okay. Any questions from the commission? Comments? This is a public hearing. We will open a public hearing if anyone wishes to speak. I'll close the public hearing and we need a motion. So we'll move uh, ordinance 2319 with the second uh, reading and public hearing on September 28th, 2023. Okay. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Ordinance 23-20. Yes, sir. Ordinance 23-20, an ordinance of the City of Winter Garden, Florida, amending the future land use map of the Winter Garden Comprehensive Plan by changing the land use designation of real property, generally described as approximately 8.72 plus minus acres located at 1265 and 1271 Avalon Road on the northeast corner of Avalon Road and Rolling Rock Way from Orange County Low Density Residential to City Medium Density Residential, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is a request for a future land use amendment to change the future land use designation from Orange County Low Density Residential to City Medium Density Residential. Uh, staff has agreed the application, and this uh, future land use designation is consistent with other city properties in that area, and so we would recommend approval of Ordinance 23-20. Any questions? Questions from the commission? Uh, yeah, I'll start with this one. So this one's a bit of a sticky wicket to be uh, motion for the annexation on the first one. The second one, though, uh, we have an R1A designation here for the county, uh, which if the applicant wanted to come in and make a, an R1 request to the city, would be certainly somewhere to look favorably upon. But in this case, they want to move this to a, a medium density, which would 
entice about 66 townhomes on this property. And as we've all discussed uh, uh, on this board before, uh, Avalon has uh, already a, an enormous traffic issue there. So putting this high density into uh, this particular prop property uh, is not really good use for the local residents around here. I hear about this problem all the time. I'm sure they're further down the road, Commissioner Sharman here is the same. Um, we recently uh, addressed this with the uh, the gas station at the, at the corner right up the street from there where they wanted to expand that as well and put in the 16 pumps and express concern for that. They eventually withdrew that application. Uh, additionally, uh, as we just approved the first reading of this budget, uh, diagonally across the street from, from this, uh, this piece of land is Tucker Ranch. So we're getting ready to invest $25 million into building the, this, this incredible park. And uh, instead of putting a nice homes in the area, we want to compact that with uh, a bunch of townhomes that uh, by any stretch of imagination are, are not going to be any more affordable for anyone other than the expense of several thousand dollars each uh, when you rent. But anyway, so be it what it may, uh, I don't think this is the proper use for, for this request. Um, and I do appreciate the staff, they did a very thorough examination, so it does not reflect uh, on the part of work you did. But from my perspective, uh, I'm going to move forward and, and not want to approve this particular ordinance and would request that the uh, developers go back and look at other possibilities and present that to us. Okay, any other comments from the commission? Yeah, Angel, could you bring up the, uh, the PD on the, on the screen? Do you have a comment? Oh, I can take a minute. Oh, I'll see you have Yeah. Nice. Yes. Which, which part of the, the site plan? The, the site plan, yes. Sure. And if I could, uh, if I could speak to the density issues real quick. Just, um, so this, this future plan use designation of medium density residential does allow for up to 10 dwelling use per acre. I know we're not on the PD portion of this hearing yet, but what they're proposing tonight is seven dwelling use per acre, so that is less than what they would potentially be allowed with the maximum. Um, this is less than both the immediately surrounding city developments to the east and west. The West Point Villas to the east has 9.87 dwelling units per acre, and Country Garden Apartments to the west has 9.45 dwelling units per acre. Um, in addition, you know, uh, this, this provides additional housing options for buyers who maybe don't want to live in a single family neighborhood. Uh, it provides a good transition from the heavy arterial commercial uses from the north to the more low density uh, further south on Am um, Avalon. And, and like you said, staff has analyzed this extensively and does believe that this is the most appropriate use for this property given uh, the context and what surrounds it. Yeah, so, okay, so it's 5.3 units per acre, basically, is what it is. Is that like it's seven oh, units per acre? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's about nine acres, and you got 66 oh, nine acres. Okay, okay. so it's 8.72 acres. You're saving the uh, air care of maintaining all of the wetland area to the north and with the vegetative buffer that's required by code. You're saving all of the, the uh, trees that were deemed in good quality. Um, it was designed around those trees to save you know, as many natural features as possible. Um, so, so Ron, I, while I don't disagree, if it was single family, you know, there's really no reason to up zone it and increase density, but it, zoning, that old county zoning is an old zoning. Future land use is what I see as vested, right? So current future land use, the comprehensive plan was done in 20, the last one? 2010, 20, this was the last yeah, one. Okay. Yeah. So that's the, the latest, what I consider, you know, property rights is what the future land use says, which says medium density, so this is a lot of I get that, and I get that argument with respect to uh, all the studies and stuff. If we start looking just south of that, we are in single family dwellings out there, which is, is inconsistent. So we're moving it forward. Uh, you know, I hate to see the word disrupted, but the truth is, no matter how we, we parse this, we're trying to cram 66 units into, uh, well, not even eight and three quarters acres, so I mean, according to the wetland and the pond and everything else. We're cramming them really in there. And we have a road that just is beyond capacity now. People are constantly complaining that they're all the way from uh, from the intersection back several streets. And this is actually going to cross over where that traffic is already backed up. And you know, the developer's comments uh, in previous meetings was, well, the county's going to widen the road. Well, that comprehensive plan is out in like 
maybe 2042. Um, so, you know, you're going to add to the problem that we have today with this medium density, 66, or really high density to me, and then feed all this traffic into a road that's already beyond capacity. So, again, if, if the developer wants to, to either withdraw this uh, and reevaluate, that would be fine, or come back with, with an R1 plan. I'm supportive of that, but or at least you know, in favor we're going there with our and all the evidence yet. But uh, this is just beyond really what what needs to go in that space. And did the traffic study determine that it was over capacity? So they did. They did do a traffic study. It was performed, and it determined that both Avalon Road and Rolling Rock Way have sufficient capacity uh, to support the, the traffic generated by 61 new dwelling units and operate at adequate home mobile service. So I'm curious how we. You know, challenge here just in general. How do we get that when we see every day traffic is deeply backed up there, people are, are constantly complaining, and then our traffic study says, oh, it's not a problem. They're looking at the impacts of this project specifically, not on not on externalities. So, so if it's already bad and 66 can't make it any worse. Well it's not gonna level the it's not gonna lower the level of service any lower, is what they say. Okay. No, the one comment and just me is I traveled three or four times a day try to get out across the street um, numerous times. And when I got the old Chevrolet, I just looked for a Mercedes or Jaguar to pull out. <laughs> as soon as they got breaks. Because you, you, know, you, you can't get out. Now, the apartment complex to the uh, west, um, a lot of those go out on Highway 50 and obviously take a right. Uh, the ones that come up through the little driveway and want to take a left, they're the same thing. They just have to you know, pray and hope. Um, at certain times of the day. So the traffic's bad, it's gonna be bad. Um, I'm not sure four laning does much more than bring more traffic. So I, mean, I don't know that I ascribe to that, but uh, just my comments. And I've always been opposed to dense town on the development when regarding myself. Mm -hmm. So with that, is, is the developer here? When we get to a public hearing. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't want to call you up yet, but I was going to say, I wouldn't know if they wanted to reconsider. We'll go ahead and open up a public hearing and let you come on up. And, okay. And Mayor, my apologies. That's okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name's uh, Doug Kelly. I'm with uh, ETM Planning and Engineering in College Park. And uh, we're working on behalf of Beezer Homes, uh, National Home Builder. And I uh, had the opportunity uh, to get this project or this parcel uh, under contract. Um, we, we've known for quite some time that uh, Avalon Road would be widened. Um, the plans are actually complete. And uh, so this, this site um, is ideally situated. Uh, when we were looking at it sort of overhead with uh, the future land use map, you know, we see a pocket of multifamily residential all around it. And then we see the county enclave. So we knew we had to come into the city for water and sewer. And uh, our intent was to be compatible with the, uh, the uh, surrounding uh, medium density residential. And we are uh, at seven units and we are going through the PUD, which gives the, um, the city the ability to place additional conditions on us um, or uh, require additional uh, standards in the uh, uh, development uh, program that we're, we're putting on there. And as you can see from the um, uh, site plan above, we do have two access points. It's right in, right out on uh, Avalon. We've uh, set the project back such that uh, we can accommodate the right of way. We have to accommodate the future right of way there. Um, these are uh, units where you uh, are rear loaded, you um, park in the rear of the unit. So if you were driving down uh, North Avalon, uh, you look over to your right, hopefully one day, and uh, you'll see the uh, front porch, um, no garage. So it has sort of a, uh, it has a, it is a town home obviously, but um, you'll have that um, image that is kind of consistent with uh, some of the other projects that are, that are here in town, you know, that are on the, uh, the uh, some of the main roads. So that's sort of the, the approach that we took. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, um, you know, just from the big picture, it was compatibility and it, and it um, got us to a point where we would, you know, we'd be able to work in the, the uh, 61 units as well as uh, all the other features without touching the wetlands area. So, but if you have any other questions, we'd be glad to try to answer those. Questions? 
you know, I think our, I guess we can go back to assets. So again, you know, have some opposition to this kind of high density space in here because of the traffic and because we are investing $25 million in this beautiful park right across the street. So would it be advantageous uh, for you to withdraw this and reconsider another design or are you set on just this proposal? Um, we are set on a, a townhome product and the uh, really the density gets us where we, we uh, need to be to make this site work just because of the the uh, land value uh, on it. All right, I, I appreciate that. So I just want sure. to give you some options before I make any motions. So okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, I have thank a you. Question for you. Yes, ma'am. Are these four ladies? Oh, 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 built for adults only, or are these going to be family townhomes? Um, <clears throat> that's your question. Um, at this point, we don't have any type of restrictions on who would purchase them. Well, there. where's the play space? Where's the green space except where the water is? It is um, surrounding the um, area here. Uh -huh. so you've got sort of this open green area looking over the storm. With the, with the lake, with the yeah. retention yeah. pond. That's really safe if you have families. Not. Really. I mean, where is anybody going to put, where are they going to sit? Only on their front balcony? These are the access, I presume, to the garages. So where do kids go? Unless you build them for adults. Okay. Also along the, uh, so by the area. Oh, that, the mosquitoes, the alligators, the other things. That is not a play area for children. No. Okay. And we have to consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All the retention laws I've ever done, I mean, I mean, I mean, of course, we have fences around. The part of the contract so far is not in. So, okay, anyone else? Okay, we will close the public hearing. Any other questions, comments from the commission? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I need to see where this is going. Would you like to table this and try to come back with us at City or would you like us to vote? And what you are asking us is to look at a change in, in density or a change in uh, unit type going uh, single family versus multifamily. I, I will tell you from my district that my preference would be that you would look at a single family approach since that's what we have to the south and we've got that huge investment to the other side. So, but, uh, you know, I would, I would give you the opportunity to go back and look at different options and come back. But otherwise, my motion may be to deny and I don't know if that's really what your, uh, what your developers would want to hear from us. Sure. It's up to you. Sure. Um, if I can speak to my uh, client uh, <coughs> and just want to check with Sure. Well, so my, my goal is trying to be fair. Sure. And just to, I guess, just to expand on that, these these units will be sold fee simple to homeowners, you know, who purchased the lot. And we worked really hard to make sure that they were aesthetically pleasing, you know, oh, yeah. both in the within the development and the surrounding community. You went, I know you went to the community meeting. We had one person come and he was in favor of the project. So, you know. Yeah, and I understand that. I also understand that there's a lot of county property here, so a lot of county people didn't come to the meeting for different they reasons. So they can develop, could they Could they do this in the county at a higher density? Uh, the medium, medium allows what, uh, 12? Medium allows 10, city. Ten. Uh, I'm not sure what the county allows in there with the density. No, there are one eight. So I'd have to look, I'd have to they, look that up. It's, it's not our own though, it's medium density. They could change their zoning. They're vested to change their zoning to a hot to a medium density zoning, which is multi-family. Yeah, we did have a conversation with Commissioner. Uh, we'll see. They would get it. They can't get one density. Right, but they could do it build an ants. But they could develop in the county, theoretically, get a higher. Theoretically, uh, you know, they have to build septic tanks, and which is not something we probably want to see out there. Oh. They have the groundwater. Yeah. Okay. What would you like to do, sir? 
Um, so if I understood correctly, that you would all ask that we would, um, or consider that we would um, <clears throat> go back uh, to the drawing board, so to speak, look at a single family uh, product versus uh, a rearrangement of the townhome product. In other words, you're looking at, at dropping the density. Um, you're when you say you all, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, not, not just. Well, no, yeah. Let's. You know, I, I, I think. I, think I don't know what the other commissioners are right. thinking. So I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'll, yeah. I, some single family and a little bit of townhome would be acceptable to me. That's my opinion. The other commissioners may share theirs or not. I'm looking for single, but but I'm open to listening to something that's not as dense as this. So. I, I would share some flexibility. I don't know how much, but and, and Ron, sometimes there's a benefit in, in attached because you can preserve our open space. So maybe leave it open to come back to less density, speak with staff. Yeah, I'm saying, that's, staff that's what I'm saying. If they, right. if they ask to withdraw and propose postpone this, I think that gives us some time to do mm -hmm. that without having to make any action tonight. And, and, and is there yeah. any provisions in the code? Or, um, Anything new as far as affordable housing? I know there's laws coming out about higher density for affordable housing. Kirk, can you elaborate on that? So sure. If some of the units were affordable, then that would be. Uh, sure. The Live Local Act that's passed, it maybe got suppressed, right. but a lot of cities and counties are dealing with it. Provides that any property that's zoned for uh, commercial, industrial, or mixed use um, is available without rezoning, without a comprehensive plan change for administrative uh, processing at a density that is at the highest density allowed in the city and at a height of at least three three stories uh, but up to the highest density of a uh, product within one mile of the subject site. So I don't know if, if Kelly has evaluated this, but this is not this is not correct commercial or industrial or mixed use, I don't believe so. So at this point it doesn't doesn't seem like it would apply based on what I understand a lot of you and what the facts are. Uh, there are, and I'm dealing with this in many jurisdictions but on both sides, and there's a lot of pressure on the legislature, and will be greater pressure on the legislature to deal with, uh, deal with this act. There's gonna be pressure to tighten it up, pressure to loosen it up. So anyway, that, that's where we are. Is there anything we can do as a city to put some, you know, it, on the developer to make some of these units affordable? Is that something that, your district around is that something you'd like to I, see in the project? Well, I can say if they want to, that's why I'd like to kick it back to them and see what they come back with. It's just, you know, the city manager and, and director Cook can have a conversation with them and say, hey, we're going to come back with some lesser density but affordable housing. Hey, John, is that something that's reasonable? Is that way out of our yeah. house? Uh, I think we you probably should let the applicant decide whether or not he wants to do agree with yeah. yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not going to build for you. So. Yeah. 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 Okay. Todd, what, what would you like to do, sir? Um, I would uh, prefer to table it, and just with a, a, a caveat, just uh, why we all are here together in this form is that we end up kind of getting into a situation where the single family folks are not wanting to be in a, in a high density or you know, middle, medium density. So I mean, that's, that is a, the product line of the Caesar generally uh, has been for townhome development. They do detach single family as well, too. But um, it, we're in a, an enclave of the county. We're in a situation where we're, we're looped in with all the multifamily residential. And that's why we um, I think it's almost it's close to a year that we've been in the city going through uh, elevation, architectural elevation review, site plan review, things of that nature. So um, uh, with that, um, you know, we, we want to be here. It's, a, it's again, a townhome product that is market rate. It, it is not, uh, um, I don't believe they would consider you know, an affordable uh, component, but um, I also understand your concern too. Okay. So with that, okay, so you are asking them on ordinance 2320 uh, to, uh, for us to table it? Yes, sir. Rather okay. than withdrawing, yes, sir. Okay. And once again, I'm going to abstain from, uh, from any vote on, on this. Actually, I, I'm, I'm going to make a motion to postpone, not withdraw, because it has a different context to it. So yeah, that's right. We're just table. Yeah, that's right. said that. Correct. Correct. So correct. Uh, I'll make a, a motion to postpone ordinance 2320 to a date to be determined. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried unanimously four to zero. 
Thank you, sir. 23 21 of the ordinance of the city of Winter Garden, Florida, rezoning certain real property generally describes approximately 8.72 plus minus acres of land generally located at 1265 and 1271 Avalon Road on the northeast corner of Avalon Road and Rolling Rock Way from Orange County R 1A single family dwelling district to city PUD. Plan unit development as set forth in this ordinance providing for certain PUD requirements and describing the development as the Beezer Wyndham Park PUD and providing for severability conflicts and an effective date. Thank you. So we're going to look to table this also. So we need a motion for that. Motion to or postpone ordinance 2321 to date to be determined. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion. We have a yourself. And I'm abstaining from voting on this also. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we have a motion. We have a second. I am abstaining. So all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? This motion carried unanimously at 4 0. Thank you, man. Approved baseball <coughs> complex use agreement with Winter Garden Little League. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, for many years, the city of Winter Garden Little League have had a verbal agreement with respect to the use of the baseball complex as well as roles and responsibilities. Over time, uh, with the change of board members or staff, there have been uh, periodic moments of confusion uh, with respect to the use roles and responsibility. Uh, with the current board that's in place, uh, they've asked us to uh, reduce uh, those roles and responsibility to writing in order to uh, smooth a smooth transition from the board and staff uh, and to uh, preserve our uh, outstanding uh, long term relationship. So, uh, staff are recommending approval of the baseball complex use grant for the Garden Little League. Uh, which, if approved, would become effective uh, upon approval with an expiration date of September 30th, 2027. Do you have to answer any questions that you have? And Little League has agreed and okay with this. Little League has agreed. And Quite extensive yeah. change. Oh, good. Yeah. Very good. Any questions from the commission? Oh, just a nice job by the city. Good job, All right. We need a motion. Motion to approve the baseball complex use agreement between her and Little League. We have a second. Second. Motion is second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Recommendation to approve the police department to purchase trailer targets and other rents and lives. Chief. Good evening, Mayor. Commissioners. The Federal Fiscal Year 22 Edward Burn Memorial Justice Assistant Grant, also known as JAG, the countywide state solicitation is earmarked $318,719. For Orange County. Of those funds, we were allotted 10826 from the law firm. And we are recommending to use those funds to purchase a trailer, targets, and other rain supplies in an amount of 10826 from this grant. And we must allow for public comment, but I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. It's not going to buy very much, is it, Chief? <laughs> Well, Orange County got up about 55% of the total funds. Actually, the uh, the bigger Orange County Sheriff's Office and Orlando Police Department, they're the big lines, and they actually reduce their amount for the smaller cities to make sure they at least get 10,000. Oh, wow. So they do. Uh, oh, very good. Okay. Um, we will have a public hearing. So we'll have a public hearing if anyone wishes to speak. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing, and we need a motion. Motion to uh, uh, approve the Justice Assistance Grant Program for $10,826. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Recommendation to approve increased labor material equipment costs for the mm -hmm. construction. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, the existing contract RFP 19-02, which is the road base asphalt curb gutter and miscellaneous concrete, concrete repairs, was executed on April 11th, 2019, which includes an Exhibit A, labor material and equipment costs. Cathcart Construction Company has requested an increase of approximately 20% of the original 2019 Exhibit A costs. The two attached documents are part of the agenda uh, for comparison and staff would recommend the 20% increase in materials, labor, and equipment costs for Catford Construction Company. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. 
Questions from the commission? Did we do any comparatives uh, with other what cost would be for materials and responders and such? No, sir, but in 2019, the cost today uh, compared to that, 20% uh, is actually even. I did, and I should have looked up the PPI from 2019 to the day. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's not a bad deal. Yeah. yeah. I'm just curious if you, it, it would be higher, I would imagine, if you yeah, checked it. Was pretty. Okay. We need a motion. Move to approve uh, the increase in labor materials for Kepler Construction Company. We have a second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you, sir. Recommendation to waive formal procurement process and approve purchase of used power generator. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, due to the wastewater plant only having one functioning backup generator, the city has leased a 1,350 kW semi-mounted trailer capable of operating the entire facility uh, during the storm season to ensure we have full redundancy. <coughs> Over the past two years, uh, this has been approximately $120,000 a year for the lease of this generator. Um, this process is gonna need to continue forward until the plant is refurbished. Uh, at that time, we'll be adding two generators, so there will be complete redundancy uh, in the rebuild of the plant. Um, the cost of the rental now has increased this year to $132,000 a year. Uh, after some negotiations with United Rentals, they've offered to sell us the generator that we're currently leasing for $290,935.96. Um, the cost for a new similar generator is about $800,000. Uh, this generator that we have leased is portable, so it can be used to provide backup power at any of the water plants in the event that we would have a failure with one of their generators as well. So purchasing this now is not just for that, but it will give us some redundancy going forward in years to come. Uh, we don't have anything to back up water plant generators. Obviously we got multiple water plants, so one of those fails would lose pressure, but not necessarily a failure, but this could be moved into uh, power of the facility and and keep it online. Be glad to answer any questions. Do we have, yeah. do we have in house personnel to do the maintenance on it or we outsource that? We outsource generator maintenance. Okay. Nice negotiating job again. <laughs> so, you can squeeze a dime out of it. I think we need a backup because our residents don't want to hear that uh, yeah. they yeah. don't have one because we didn't do it. Is that we, motion there? We need a motion. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds like you made one. No, I just, my opinion. We uh, need I'll motion. move for the purchase of the uh, generator. Okay, do we have a second? Second. A motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Recommendation to our vehicles and equipment this surplus. Yes, sir. Again, we have uh, gathered up a few uh, vehicles and some uh, few items uh, on the attached list that uh, is no longer functional or usable and we need to dispose of. Glad to answer your questions. Yeah. Any questions? You get your money for it, a lot of them. We need a motion. A motion to declare vehicles and equipment as surplus and authorize sale or disposal in a manner to be determined by the city manager. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Recommendation to waive formal procurement process and approve purchase order to Skylight Review. Yes, sir. Okay, this one is, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, we're working on Tanner Hall and doing a refurbishment over there. And due to the limited time for completion, we're requesting to uh, issue a purchase order to Skylight Roofing in amount of $145,333 to replace the existing roof at Tanner Hall with a new metal roof system. Um, during the refurbishment, we realized we had some roof leaks and in inspecting the roof, it needs to be replaced. To do refurbishment or any work at Tanner, we have to schedule blocks of time, which we have right now, and this can be completed in the current block of time. If we push it, they book 18 months ahead, so it would be 18 months before we could get back in 
again to do the roofing. So we're requesting to issue a purchase order, uh, obviously with a contingency for total amount of 159,866.30. Okay. Glad to answer any questions. Any questions from the commission? The life of the metal roof's about 30, 35 years? Yes. And obviously I shared with you in that there's two quotes there for shingle and metal. And, uh, I think as discussed with all the staff, they felt like the metal roof was the way to go. Great. So we have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. Motion second. All in favor say the final second on it. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Recommendation for the site plan for 721 Bayman Road. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is a request for site plan approval for a 0.43 acre parcel located at 721 Vineland Road. The applicant is proposing to demolish the existing buildings and redevelop the land with a single story, 3,267 square foot building uh, with parking, landscaping, and two dry retention ponds. The building will house an organization called The Nurture Place, which is a nonprofit organization that provides counseling services for children and families. The proposed use receives special exception permit from the Planning and Zoning Board on January 9th, as well as various approval from setbacks. This proposal is consistent with the property's residential neighborhood commercial future land use designation and RNC zoning requirements. So with that, staff would recommend approval of the site plan at 721 Vineland Road with staff conditions. Okay. Happy to answer any questions. Questions from the commission? Hearing none, we need a motion. Move to approve the site plan. Okay, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Site plan for 35 and 41 West Morgan Street. This is a request for site plan approval for a 1.11 acre property, property located at 35 and 41 West Morgan Street at 965, 981, and 995 Island Road. The applicant is proposing to develop the land with a 9,063 square foot single story office and retail building with associated landscape, parking, and retention pond. Uh, the applicant received PCD approval for this proposed development in 2021. This proposal is consistent with the property's future land use designation of commercial and the PCD zoning requirements adopted via Ordinance 21 20. So, with that, staff would recommend approval of the Morgan Street office retail complex site plan with staff conditions. Questions from the commission? Hearing none, we need a motion. Move to approve the site plan for 3541 West Morgan and 965, 981, and 995 Island. Okay, we have a second. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. <clears throat> Recommendation for site plan 14909 West Cornell Drive. Thank you. This is a request for site plan approval for a 4.28 acre parcel located at 14909 West Colonial Road, which is the location of the former Reliable Peat Topsoil Yard. The applicant is proposing to redevelop the site with a commercial development that includes seven new buildings, totaling 53,000 uh, square feet, to be used for retail, office, medical, restaurant, as well as associated improvements such as parking and landscaping. This proposal is consistent with the property's commercial future land use designation and C2 zoning requirements and is compliant, compliant with the West State Road 50 overlay requirements. So with that, staff would recommend approval of the site plan at 14909 West Colonial Drive with staff conditions. Questions from the commission? So we, we had community meetings. Yes. I didn't make that one. So um, the buffer between this property and the neighborhood behind it is... Right, right. Yeah, it's it's pretty robust. It's it's over 50 feet, and there um, there's actually we required them to do a double row of buffering just just to buffer them from from that neighborhood. We presented that to the community, and they, they received that very positively. Yeah, there's I noticed one. that the parking was on the interior. So yes, exactly. So they will not see any headlights from cars shining into their backyards. We made sure that all of that would be shielded uh, by the building wall and that really dense double row. Of it's a different design. I thought the best you could do was something that's facing Colonial, yeah. which, you know, is very expected to be commercial and busy. Right, right. So, mm -hmm. a nice transition. Okay. Any other questions? Need a motion? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the site plan for 14909 West Colonial. Do we have a second? 
Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Votes. Motion carried unanimously. Recommendation to approve special event, Oktoberfest. <laughs> yes, ma'am. This is a special event request by the Crooked Can Brewery to hold their annual Oktoberfest on October 20th through the 22nd, which is Friday through Sunday. Uh, this event will run from noon till 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday and noon till 6 p.m. on Sunday. The applicant is proposing the exact same setup as last year, including closing South Central Avenue to set up several tents with food, a stage of live music, and would allow the consumption of alcohol only within the designated closed off areas. Uh, with that, staff recommends approval of Crooked Cans Oktoberfest with the staff additions. Any issues from last year that we need to look at for this year? Nothing, no. Okay. okay. Questions from the commission? None. We need a motion. Motion to approve the special event Oktoberfest at Cricket Pan, October 20th, 21st, and 23rd. Okay. We have a second. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say goodbye by saying aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Yeah, question on that. Yeah, it's it's still dates on it. Yeah, both of them said it says 2021 and 23. That was a mistake on the uh, agenda. It's 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 the, the 20th, the 21st, and the 22nd, not the 23rd. It's on the uh, <laughs> yeah, it's on this right here. Just did you second or modified motion? Okay, it's planning and zoning board. Thank you. Uh, uh, a vacancy recently opened up on the Planning and Zoning Board due to a member of District 4 moving out of the city. Uh, currently, Districts 1 and 3 have two members each, so staff recommend appointing a new Planning and Zoning Board member from Districts 2 or 4. Okay. Here I have somebody from District 4 I'd like to present. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Buden. He's a construction business owner now for the last 18 years, but the most impressive part about his resume is he was an Army Rancher. So, uh, board will be safe from the safe county. <laughs> Ron? Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to the commissioner. I'm sure I we'll, we'll wait to my turn. Okay. Form of a motion? Form of a motion. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Section. We have a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Madams and citizens of Winter Garden. Matters from city attorney. Past mayor, thank you. City manager. Uh, just a few updates, Mayor. Uh, starting with Marsh Road, uh, we installed a new permanent speed table uh, last Sunday on uh, 910. Uh, so we'll uh, wait and see if we can get uh, any sort of positive feedback from the residents that are in the community from Lake County through the city. Um, the construction has reached uh, a point where it's nearing completion. Uh, so beginning uh, around September 17th, uh, running through uh, about the 20th to the 29th of October, uh, the crew will start doing their final list of asphalt out there. Uh, the unfortunate thing about this uh, is it will be night work, uh, so there may be some associated noises uh, with that work, but uh, we have uh, deployed variable message boards, uh, notice the HOAs, uh, and have also placed the message on the city's website to that effect. I might uh, get those from the county for their night work. I would say the county's doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. on road. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, in addition to uh, that, uh, uh, and as part of the project, Twin Waters is going to be getting the new sound barrier wall, and that's supposed to be uh, starting construction around the third week of September. Uh, and once that work is done, we'll shift into more of the permanent traffic calming meters that we have planned around the roundabouts uh, and then that long stretch. So if the weather works in our favor and uh, we don't encounter any surprises along the way, we should have a final project done around Christmas time. Uh, next item is uh, just an update on some building permit requirements. Uh, for many years, uh, the city has required anybody that's living in a deed restricted community to submit uh, a, an approval letter from the HOA uh, when they're requesting to do building permits. Uh, this practice was recently called into question uh, 
and after doing some research with the city attorney, it was determined that we could not enforce the HOA's covenants and restrictions by requiring such letter, letter before issuing a building permit. Uh, so what we've done, and I've uh, given you a draft copy of the notice, minus the red line that you see that uh, we're going to send out to all the HOAs. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, print a message on the bottom of the building permit that advises homeowners uh, that they are required to contact uh, their HOA prior to commencing any work. Uh, and that new requirement is to begin um, on January 1, 2024. Uh, and lastly, just uh, two events, September 17th, we have the ICF Tour of the Garden Bicycle event from 7 to 1 p.m. at Vets uh, Park, starting at Vets Park, and then uh, they will be utilizing the trail. And uh, beginning September 26th, running through October 21st, we will begin to decorate downtown for the Halloween event. So we're starting to shift into the fun part of the year. Uh, and I have no further comments. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Sharman. Just want to thank city staff for that uh, speed uh, table. They did. I'm not sure. Uh, appreciate you guys doing that, taking care of it. The permanent one should hold up better. Maybe last a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. All right. Commissioner Mason. I want to thank staff uh, and the residents of District 3 for the collaboration of the Sony Book pro uh, Park pro uh, Project. So many times we have residents that just don't want anything built any anywhere, and it was uh, they knew it was going to be developed. They were reasonable. Staff was reasonable. It was great compromise and collaboration, and ended up with a good project. And I really want to thank staff for doing that. That's all I have. Commissioner Rio, uh, to thank Laura and team for a great budget this year, well put together. Thank you so so very much for that. Uh, Kurt for the training today, appreciate that. And board, thank you for uh, helping us work with the developer this evening, uh, giving us some options to go back and consider if there could be money and support on that one. Thank you. Commissioner Bennett. Thank you for all the hard work on the budget, as usual. Just appreciate staff. Okay. I'll let go of that. And with uh, John and Laura, we're going to stay a well funded city and uh, well documented. They, uh, they do an excellent job. With that, we will adjourn.